Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I'm very grateful that I'm able to feature such a wide spectrum of truly amazing guests who inspire all of us to be better in making a positive impact in society. We are here right now broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is the extremely popular radio DJ on Star 101.9, and he is one of the best marketing directors in the state of Hawaii. He is Flash Hansen, and today we are going beyond radio. Hey, Flash. Hey, brother. Great to see How you. Are you. Now, you've been making such an impact in Hawaii for decades. Mm. <laughs> right? A couple of years, couple of years. No, yeah, yeah, 20 years or so. Now, Flash, I want to ask you, where, you grew, where did you grow up at? Born and, and raised. Oh, in Hawaii. Yeah. And what schools did you go to? Uh, Ina Haina, New Valley, <laughs> Kalani, and Kaiser, both, and uh, UH. And you played any sports during those years? Uh, I played baseball growing up. I played a lot of baseball. Um, until I found skateboards. <laughs> so then about my, from my, I played baseball through my freshman year, and then I switched to skating. And then what college did you end up going to? UH. Uh, but I, um, as many self-starting, busy people do, I, I ended up dropping out, I think, after three semesters. Never went back. Really? Yeah. And yet you're so successful today. <laughs> right? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, uh, I probably would have liked to have stayed in college, or maybe not stayed in college. I think getting out when I did and doing what I did was was what was meant to be. But I think if if you have the time to go back when you are an actual adult, knowing what it is you're actually interested in, and going back and taking classes, not even necessarily for a degree, but I think that would be a good thing to do. It's something I've actually still, even to this day, think about. I'll never do it because I'm just too insanely busy, but. Yeah. Like in a perfect world, I think I would do that. Yeah, just for learning. I mean, knowledge is power. Correct. Correct. Now, Flash, I want to ask you, what was the first job that you ever had in your life? Like many kids, I had a paper route. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think I was um, 12, 11 or 12, like 7th, 8th grade. Okay. Yeah. Was it fun? Uh, I lived in Wailaiki. That's a crazy ridge. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had to walk a mile down do the route with a... 50 papers, and then walk back up to my house. So uh, in hindsight, it was fantastic exercise. Yep. Um, and I've got the calves to prove it to this, <laughs> to this day. But um, I, uh, yeah, it was tough. Um, I mean, I was never, I'm not big now, and I, I was definitely like a scrawny little kid. And to have this, you know, the, the newspaper bag with 50 papers in it was like, that thing weighed as much as I did. It yeah. was, it was, very hard work, yeah. but I, re I really liked it. And since then, Flash, you've had a ton of jobs. Can you tell me yeah. the types of jobs that you had and what places you worked at? I started out as a, as a busboy um, at Hot Rod Cafe, which was owned by David Shutter and Fred Peluso, two oh, yeah. kind of big 80s nightlife guys. Uh, business owners and uh, Hot Rods was, I mean, they would hate for me to say, say this, but it's like a Studebaker's ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started out as a busboy there, uh, then became a barback. Um, barbacked at some other spots around town, and after barbacking for about a year, became a bartender. And that's um, those days is where I got my nickname um, that's obviously still stuck. Um, and I'm Definitely a lot slower than I used to be. So. <laughs> You're still that flash name, to that me. That name isn't as applicable as it, as it used to be. But um, yeah, you know, I bartended all over town. And I, I, it, it's weird now because for a very long time, that's, people knew me as, as this bartender. Um, and I mean, I bartended everywhere. Um, I bartended at Pure Platinum, wow. which then became totally titanium. Yeah. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Jungle, uh, Hula's, uh, Blue Zebra was where I really ma made a name for myself, World Cafe, um, and then I opened my own nightclub when I was 24 and bartended there as well, Club yeah. 1739. Wow, geez, a lot of places. So yeah, so I came up as a bar guy. I mean, that's, yeah. that was kind of my 
that's, that's my foundation and, and was really the bread and butter of how I made my money. So in terms of bartending, what are some do's and don'ts for customers? Great question, Rusty. <laughs> I'm glad you asked this. Um, number one tip, always tip, even if the service isn't great, uh, you want to tip. When you're walking up to a bar when it's busy, um, have your money or your credit card out already and know what you want to order. You know, what's the worst thing is when you, you have a busy bar and the guy finally acknowledges you or the lady. Yeah. Uh, and they go, what do you, hey, Rusty, what do you want? And you go, uh. <laughs> it's like, dude, you've been standing there for 10 minutes. Like, have your order ready. Have your money ready. Um, and just be, you know, be nice. You know, the, the biggest thing when I was bartending is, is I always say you see people at their worst in nightlife. Um, you know, you've had a long week, you've worked really hard, you're, you're going and blowing off some steam, you've had a few drinks. It's kind of a perfect storm for people to be at their douchiest. Um, and it, when you're working, you need to realize and accept that that's kind of how people are going to be. Um, so you need to be patient um, w with the customers. But um, as a customer, just be nice and be courteous. And that'll really typically go a long way. Well, also, when all else fails, if you're with a hot girl and you're not getting service, send her to the bar. <laughs> she'll, de she'll definitely get called on. I like these insights, Flash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about you and Maddie Boy. Um, you guys ran some of the best parties to affect Honolulu's nightlife for many, many years. Why did you guys start that, and how did you guys connect? So, originally, I was... Um, after my nightclub closed, I went and became, um, and this is obviously the shortened version of the story, I became the um, promotions and marketing director for Wave Waikiki. Yeah. What I would call the Studio 54 of Hawaii. And it, it was open for 26 years, incredibly successful club. And uh, they turned over the marketing position to someone who'd never done anything like that before. I was a bartender. Okay. Um, even though I owned my own nightclub, I was the bar manager of the nightclub, and I wasn't on the marketing or promotion side. I knew the bar. I didn't know anything else. The owner of the Wave, Jack Law, my mentor to this day, he's just an amazing, magical person. Um, super sharp. You should definitely have him on the show. Um, he saw something in me that I certainly didn't see in myself made me the promotions and marketing director. Did that for several years. I always had people working for me. Um, and eventually over time, I had a full-time uh, assistant position open. I actually hired Maddie Boy before I even met him. I was friends with his brother. Oh. And he said, uh, Tim was his name. Tim said, hey, my little brother is, is coming for the summer. You know, I know you're always looking for workers. Um, you know, do you have anything? And at the time, I, I would pay anybody $7 an hour to paint the wave black because <laughs> the wave was this giant black box and it always needed to be repainted black and, you know, pull out staples from the walls, just like, just Grom stuff. Um, so I said, yeah, I'll hire him. Um, Maddie worked for me for the summer. He was incredibly shy, uh, didn't really say much, but... He was 21 or 22 at the time, and uh, I, I just knew there was just something about this kid that was special and different, and uh, we really got along well. And um, he started out, you know, painting the wave black for me and pulling out staples, we, we, which we <laughs> joke about to this day, um, to then becoming my full-time assistant. And I was doing, all, obviously, all these parties at the wave, and he would ask me all these questions constantly. And because, um, and this is just a really good thing for anybody in business, is always get someone in the room that knows nothing about your business. Because the experts will tell you all the reasons why you can't do X, Y, Z. Yeah. But if you have someone that doesn't know anything about it, they, it's that different mindset, that uh, kind of that fresh, Open different mind. Um, set of eyes on it will ask different questions, come about things in a different way. And that's what Maddie did, because he'd never done anything like this before. Um, and by this point, I've been doing it for several years. Um, he would ask these questions, and I'd be like, you know what? I, I, I don't know why it's that way. Or, <laughs> yeah, we should do it this way. Like, that's right. Yeah. Um, and he just, got, he just got me to thinking and looking at things in a little bit different light. Um, and I just I really liked how his brain worked. Um, I mean, he's young, he's good looking, he's extremely shy, but he was very charming. 
um, and he had all these ideas for events. And he went to his brother first, who was also a promoter. And his brother said, no, I don't want to do events with you. That typical older brother, <laughs> you know, kind of mentality. And I'm like, well, let's just do it together. I said, I'm already doing parties here. Just do a party with me. I'll put up all the money. Like, I'll do everything. Just come in and, and do. Maddie was just always a very, and is a very, very creative uh, thinker in person. Um, and I said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, we, we did a party together called uh, Glitter and Glamour. And it was this big, fun dress-up party. And uh, it, we just had a blast working together. You, you know, know, you guys had a, you guys came up with such great names for your parties. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you guys were legendary. So, oh, thank you. Um, I'm definitely hiring you as my publicist. <laughs> so, um, you know, what happened was, is Maddie and I had a run of doing um, events together for about eight years. Um, all different kinds of events all over town. Um, and they were, as a general whole, they were successful. I mean, you always have your misses. Yeah. Uh, and some of the funnest, in fact, probably the funnest party we ever did was a complete and utter financial failure. But it, we just had a blast. And there was a lot of parties where uh, what I would say is we did everything right but make money. Mm. Um, and we were never really doing it for the money it was always we just wanted to have fun and we wanted our friends to have fun it'd be like oh wouldn't it be cool to like create this experience kind of thing um and i think that's a really that's a really pure and honest way to come about doing anything is not try to think about the end result the end financial result um, um, I can validate for that because I had I had a lot of fun at you guys' parties. Now, yeah. you know, for uh, uh, <laughs> for for Maddie Boy, he became a co-founder of BAMP and Philip, and right. you were with BAMP for a while. Right. So uh, Maddie and I, we, after we you know we were doing nightlife and parties and events for eight years, we we realized that we didn't want to do that forever. Um, you know, we were doing events at Pearl at the time, and you know. Pearl's closing at four in the morning. Like yep. we, you get older, you're like, this isn't as fun as it used to be. So we thought the logical step would be to open a restaurant, um, which we then opened apartment three together. And right about um, this time is w when BAMP also kind of really started taking off. BAMP Project, largest concert company in the state yeah. now. Yeah. It wasn't at the time. They were doing, you know, a handful of shows a year. And um, apartment three, opened in 2009 and that's kind of when BAMP was really starting to take off doing a bunch of shows at Pipeline and all that and when uh, Maddie started you know talking about the idea of opening what became the Republic which is there's a lack of venues in Hawaii for shows why why doesn't BAMP just open their own venue and then that's the reason that the Republic is even open um, and Maddie and I uh, kind of always knew that if and when the time come for BAMP to hire um, a marketing, you know, director that, that, you know, I would be that guy. And um, I think in 2012 is when that happened. So I was actually, up until 2012, BAMP was just like three dudes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, people don't realize how big BAMP got without any employees. I was actually BAMP's first employee yeah. um, and first full-time employee. And um, that could only even happen because I was also the marketing and promotions director for the Republic. Yeah. So I was, I was doing, I had the same job title for the concert company and for the concert venue as well. It was interesting, you know, to, to look back now and see just the growth, you know, from that time period. And now you're the extremely popular radio <laughs> DJ for 101.9 star, right? Now, wh sure, yes. Wh why, why do you like doing radio right now? Uh, I love to talk, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> Give me a mic and uh, I'll, I'll talk all day. I, I love to uh, pontificate for sure. And, um, you know, I had worked in radio before with Maleko. Um, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll circle back to that. But, yeah. Um, and you love music. I love music. Um, and obviously, with all the work I've done with BAMP over you know, the five and a half years I was there, um, I became very associated with um, marketing for specific types of things. And even you know, what I did before that, basically entertainment marketing yeah. is something I've, I've, for better or worse, am known for at this point. So um, iHeart approached me with a job opening, opening that I didn't wasn't on my radar and I certainly wasn't looking. Um, 
And not only that, the job opening for their you know, marketing and promotions uh, director position was available, but they wanted me to actually take over Maleko's spot on the radio as well. Um, and I was much more interested, to be honest, in being on the radio than I was of taking the real job side of it for iHeart. But yeah, I love being on the radio. I love being able to talk, say whatever you want. I mean, you have your own TV show. You know, <laughs> I'm going to have on whoever I want. I'm going to talk about whatever I want. I'm going to ask whatever questions I want. It's fun. It's great. And you know what? Everyone has to listen, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not like a conversation in real life where someone can, you know, steal the mic away from you. Flash, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond radio with you. Sounds good. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Flash Hansen. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the extremely popular radio DJ on Star 101.9, and he is one of the best marketing directors in the state of Hawaii. He is Flash Hansen, and today we are going beyond radio. Flash, we're talking a little bit about uh, the Maleko and Flash podcast. How did you guys start that? Uh in 2007, Maleko said, hey, I want to do a podcast with you. And of course, in 2007, it's like, what the hell are you talking about? What is that? <laughs> um, he was already on the air on Star. And at the time, podcasts, you could only get them on iTunes. There was, you know, it was like almost pre-smartphone. Certainly, you didn't have a podcast app. Most people didn't know what podcasts were. So um, it was kind of a very archaic, very almost beta time for podcasts. Um, and we did the podcast from 07 to 09. Um, we ended up with somewhere in the neighborhood of over 2,500 subscribers. Wow. Um, we ended up in the top um, 100 iTunes comedy podcasts, um, which comedy is, <laughs> that's <laughs> using that word loosely for sure. Um, but it was just really Maleko's idea, but we had really good chemistry. I had um, subbed in on the radio with him a few times, and, and we knew that we, there was something between us chemistry-wise, and, and we were best friends in real life, too. So it's like, of course, you always want to do something. If you can do something fun with your friends, you know, why not? Um, and we had these great facilities at, at, at the time, Clear Channel, now iHeart. Yeah. So we did that for uh, two years. Uh, one of the program directors at iHeart actually listened to the podcast and liked it so much that that's how we got a morning show on, at the time, I-94. Nice. Um, and so we stopped doing the podcast because then we started, we had our own morning show on the radio. Um, and we did that for um, a couple years as well. And that was happening uh, when Apartment 3 was open as well. So yeah. I was uh, incredibly busy. So how's, how's the podcast going now, currently? So now, you know, we stopped the podcast to start the morning show. And we always were like, hey, we want to, at some point, get back to the podcast, but we're both really busy and there wasn't really an incentive to do it. Um, and we finally, the stars aligned and back, I think in February of last year, we started it up again. And again, we've got these great facilities at iHeart. Why not do it? iHeart has this great um, technology that makes it really easy uh, to deal with podcasts on the back end. 
And so we just started doing it again, mainly because Maleko and I, again, have this like chemistry and it's just fun and let's just get people on. And, you know, we have guest bartenders, so now we're drinking <laughs> and it's, you know, we joke around. It's all just a ruse to get people to give us free alcohol and make us drinks. We bring in bartenders that, that make us all cocktails. Yeah. So that every and Rusty, take notes on this, by the way. So I am. We have cocktails there and bartenders making us drinks in real time while we're having a conversation with someone. Uh, and it's worked out fantastically in the podcast now. It's, you know, it's the most popular local iHeart podcast. Uh, it's getting really good traction. Uh, we do it once a week on Wednesdays. And we've had... Um, some really, really amazing, fantastic guests on it, you know, local celebs. And of yeah. course, you know, I have a lot of local, you know, entertainment and music ties. And so we're able to get some, some really amazing people on the show. And, you know, you sit and rap with them for 60 to 90 minutes, as you know, yeah. and, and you get to learn a lot more about someone who might just be Guy Hoggy, the weather guy, who's, <laughs> you know, on all those memes. You know, you get to find out who the real person is and what makes them tick. Um, and get some insight behind the scenes of whatever, you know, it, it is that they're doing. You know, it's, it's, it's similar to this show, only longer and with alcohol. <laughs> and a little funnier, too. Flash, in my book, in my book, Beyond the Lines, I talk about looking forward to challenges and welcoming adversity. What, what's been an adversity that you dealt with in your life that you have to overcome? Um... I think for anyone that lives in Hawaii that wants to stay in Hawaii, I think a general adversity that we all face is the, just the ability to live here. Yeah. Um, if you can find a way uh, you know, to put food on the table and to pay your bills and not have to move away to do it, um, I consider you successful. Um, and it's, it's very hard to do that here. Um, and I've... I've always wanted, in my mind, I thought success was just being able to stay here, you know, where my family is, and to, to just to be able to continue to live in, in such an amazing place with just amazing people. It's very difficult. And that's, that's a common um, adversity that everyone that lives here faces. Oh, I like hearing that perspective. And let's talk about Krista Whitmire. She's someone that goes beyond the lines. And... For the viewers that don't know, I mean, she was a hugely popular radio DJ here in Hawaii. She's one of your best friends, and she passed away a few months ago uh, because of cancer. How did you and Krista meet? Uh, ironically, Maleko introduced us. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was doing a party. I did a party called Skyline at the Hanohana Room, yep. and uh, this was before it became this you know, giant beast of an event. That the skyline that everyone knew. This was in the early days. It wasn't that busy. Um, Maleko brought Krista in, and we, I mean, it was just like instant chemistry. And um, I think at some point we even, you know, Houdini'd on Maleko, and, <laughs> and her and I ended up at the wave. And, you know, we're partying till four in the morning the first night we meet. We're just, ha we just had such an instant connection. We have a very kind of, uh, Similar personalities, similar energy level, similar optimistic outlook on life. Like there was just a lot of similarities uh, between us, and we just really clicked. Yeah. Um, and really, from that day forward, you know, we were best friends. Yeah. Well, people also referred to her as Super CW, and I want to know, Flash, um, why why was she so special? There's um many reasons why she was special and i think you know her her energy level um was through the roof um and her just her she just radiated positivity in a way that i i've i've never really seen um out of someone else before you might see it out of other people that in that way in small doses but um, being as close to Krista as I was, we were together all, a lot. Yeah. And she, I mean, she, that's just how she was, you know, all the time. She was just wired that way. And it's just, just nothing ever. Um, <laughs> one of the, the key things I always think about when I think about Krista and what she taught me personally was um, Krista saw the absolute best in everybody. Um, you could have a hundred things going on, 99 of them are terrible, you know, um, you're a dick, 
no one likes you, you're mean, you're all these things. But she would find that one thing out of 100 about you um, that was positive, and she would make sure not only that you knew it, but then everyone else around you knew it too. And she just had this incredibly innate ability to focus on only the best qualities in people and to help bring those qualities out in those people and also let everyone else around those people know that those qualities existed in you. It, phenomenal, phenomenal. And that's part of the reason why people felt so connected to her and uh, she was so loved is because whenever she's around you, she uplifts you. She makes you feel better about you. Yeah. Um, and she was very um, empowering in that way um, to other people. And again, she was just wired that way, you know, and, and she was just really good like that. And she was just, she was just an amazing person to be around um, in, in general. She was such a hard worker. She was really good at connecting people. She was a connector. She collected people and she connected all the people that needed to be connected together. Oh, Rusty, you have a TV show. Yep. You got to meet my friend Flash. It'd be great <laughs> to be on your, she just did that constantly all yeah. the time. Yeah. No, and you know, Flash, you and Krista have such positive energy about you guys. And, you know, Krista, the last time I saw her was backstage at the Duff Leopard concert, and <laughs> she looks so happy. I'm yeah. like, Krista, and she's like, Rusty. And, you know, Duff Leopard's my all time number one favorite band. And it might be for Krista, too, because of how she looked. She was, I, I was shocked, surprised, and to find out she was a Duff Leopard fan, as big as she was. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was one of her favorite bands of all time. Yeah. And Flash, you know, when she got diagnosed with cancer, she's so brave. I mean, her perspective, her outlook in life. Can you talk more about that? Uh, I was with her when the um, in the room when they when they came back and said, this is for sure cancer. You know, up until that point, we uh, we suspected and we knew it was probably true, but it's different when you hear the doctor say the actual words yeah. um, and stage four cancer, you know, on top of that. Um, it was very hard, you know. Um, she broke down and um, it was interesting because at first she did, she, you know, you have to process it and she didn't know what she was going to do and she didn't want me to tell anybody. And um, it took her several days to wrap her head around it. But then that's when she decided, uh, not only am I going to beat this, but I'm going to go public with my journey because there's other people going through the same thing I'm going through right now. And she almost immediately recognized, um, and this speaks to her selflessness of, she, she realized very quickly that others were going through what she was going through and how can I help those other people? How can I use me having cancer and the platform that she had at that time, you know, on social media and in real life with her network and her connections. Um, she realized that this was the reason that she was put on this earth was to help guide people that uh, were in the position that she was in. And also people like me that were friends of people in that position. How, how can we all get through this together? Because it's really scary. Um, and the, the scariest part is the unknown, you know, yeah. what happens next. You know, um, with cancer, there isn't really a guidebook. Now there is, thanks to Krista, because she wrote one. Yeah. But um, it, it was incredible to see, you know, the bravery that, that she had. and. Uh, I went to many doctor's appointments with her and she would say, you know, get your phone out and I want you to record this. And I'm like, I don't, maybe not this time or maybe not this one thing. And she would just be like, no, you got to film all of it because she felt it was really important to get that message out, to have people see, you know, her being scared and vulnerable so that they would feel okay to, to be scared and, and, and vulnerable. It really, really courageous. I, I, I mean, I even watching her go through that and, and all the good that it did, I, I wouldn't be that strong to be able to do that now if I was in that position. Flash, I appreciate you, you know, really sharing these insights because, I mean, we're all better people for knowing Krista and hopefully all the people that will watch this episode will share it with all of their friends because I mean, it's, it's, it's 
Very impactful, and, and we need more Kristas in the world. And I have to say, Flash, thank you for coming on to the show, because we want more Flashes in the world. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you sharing your insights about you know everything and how you're really helping impact the community in, in Hawaii. All right, well, thank you. Thanks, Flash. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Flash and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.